local organization that's doing big time restoration of forests and stream banks. Hello, I'm John Letts, producer of Adventures in Education. Welcome back to Ramping Up Your English. This is segment two of episode 46. In a previous episode, we described a black-tailed deer using the slight resemblance to a dog as a starting point. When we described how a deer was different from the largest dogs, that was our next very important step. Later, we added features of a deer that had nothing to do with comparing it to a dog. We could have used another familiar animal as well. We could have used a cow like this Jersey heifer. This time the familiar animal is larger than a deer. So that will be one of the first things we point out. As we did when we contrasted a deer with a dog, we point out the main ways a deer is different. So we start with a couple of sentences that show the main contrast in size and bulk. Again, we use the connecting words similar to and only to show that we're comparing but also contrasting. We use the rule of adding ER to an adjective to make a comparative and the word more before an adjective to achieve the same thing. We also use the words in comparison to in order to communicate the proportion of leg length to body size. Deer are seldom confused with cows because their head is so different. So this is an important distinction to make. Remember, we're using our words to form a picture in the mind of the listener or reader. <clears throat> the head of a deer is different from that of a cow. The overall head is more slender, more of a triangular shape than a cow, and the snout is more narrow and pronounced. Just like when using a dog for comparison, there are those large pointed ears that deer have. In this case, we use the words in proportion to, since the head sizes are different. A deer's ears are larger in proportion to the size of its head, and they are more pointed on the tips. Since we're describing an animal that's named a black-tailed deer, describing the tail and contrasting it with the cow are important distinctions to make. A deer's tail is much shorter than a cow's tail. The tail of a black-tailed deer bushes out as soon as it leaves its rump. The tail is mostly black, but there's a narrow white border and the underside is white. Of course, there are many things we need to add to accurately describe these deer, but we'll move on to our homework now. I just wanted to use another animal other than a dog for comparison with a familiar animal. In episode 44, we went into greater detail in describing a deer. For homework, we had viewers use the same strategies to describe a black bear. Let's view the video clip we saw last time about black bears. Black bears. You want to see one in the wild, yet not on the trail you're hiking. They are North America's most numerous species of bear and the most widely distributed, found from Alaska to Louisiana, Oregon to Vermont. Just their paw print can engender a sense of wonder and caution. Black bears hibernate, but only in certain areas. You may find a sleeping bear in a cave or at the base of an overturned tree. They use very little energy while hibernating, but in warmer climates, black bears skip the winter nap. They stay active all year. This black bear is in Alaska, where it surely hibernated through the harsh winter. It looks like it used all its fat and then some, now munching on some grass after hibernation. Its hunger brought it to the edge of the water, but sight of our boat had it returned to the safety of the forest. These first graders are giving hints so their classmate can guess the animal in the picture behind her head. It's a brown and it's big. Big and brown, good. Has it? It has. It has. Um, it has little, little and big. This dance. This dance. Big, big and brown. Yeah. Oh, big paws. 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 Big
much good. Angelica, you're raising your hand quietly again. Lots of fur. Deanna. Ooh, that's a good hint. Do you have any guesses? Yeah. What? Um, bear. Good, you get a point. From the safety of a boat, I videotaped these bear cubs exploring the coastline in Alaska. Mama bears are notoriously protective of their young, but these cubs were allowed to romp freely. Tell me about the black bears' adaptations. American black bears have flat teeth so they can grind plants. They have um, carved claws so they can um, protect their young and get grab food. They have black fur so they can blend in. American black fur hibernate during the winter. And you know don't forget can... about the bear. And they have oh, the, the bear. bear. The mouse is the bear, <laughs> the mammal? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> That's you already take that. Hey, the bear the are wicked. The whale is like a huge, it's like a, like, mm, a huge mammal. Bears can be dangerous, especially when cubs are around. Hi, my name is Melanie Hurtado, and I'm going to say something special of my American black bear. American black bears, in the winter, they hibernate, and it goes up about 31 pounds, and it stays without soil and water. This black bear seems to be stalking these buffalo. A fence separates the bear from the bison. This black bear is about to receive a meal from children attending summer camp at Wildlife Images. They spent the morning assembling food that's healthy for the black bears and several other animals as well at this Wildlife Rehabilitation and Education Center. In there, which is fine. It's just produce. It's right know. there. And I think we had a whole bunch of plums somewhere that she said we could have. Um. Black bears are unpredictable. While hiking in the forest of southern Oregon, I've heard and spotted black bears running away from me. More often, I've seen the tracks on the trail, the tracks left by the paws of the bears. But the bears, they stayed out of sight. Rarely, bear encounters turn out differently. The most dangerous is when hikers come across a female bear with her cub. The mama bear sees the human as a predator and will suddenly attack. A friend of mine was hiking on a canyon trail along the Rogue River and met a bear when coming around a blind bend in the trail. After a tent standoff, the bear began a charge, but then ran off the trail, leaving my friend a bit shaken. These black bears were taken to wildlife images because they had been traumatized or injured. No longer able to survive in the wild, they are now a part of Wildlife's Images Education Program. The summer campers throw the nutritious food safely over the electric fencing to the black bears. Preparing this food has taught them about the nutritional needs of these animals. Bye, beer. That's all for segment two. We'll be back with segment three right after this.